Good morning, everybody. This is Donald Blumdahl, Hall of Fame veteran, sports cards, and collectibles. I think Donald is downstairs testing the turkey. Nope, no turkey this year, Kevin. We're having a an eight-pound chuck gross that's in the crock pot right now. My daughter started it this morning, and it's, mmm, the aroma in the house smells so good. <laughs> so, uh... We are going to have a little bit of fun here, have a short stream. It won't be super, super long. I told my daughter I'd try and be done by about 11-ish. <laughs> so we will get on to our content at hand. I'll give it another few seconds here to see who's first in the live chats. It looks like we have Bibby Bobka's in the house. We have Kevin's Card Collecting and Moore's in the house. And we have Big E Hurt. 35 sports cards and memorabilia is in the house. And it looks like they are our three entries for our December giveaway for today. So let me get uh, Bibby Bobka in here. And then uh, Kevin's card collecting. Let me get Kevin in here real quick. And then we will get into our content at hand. And Big E Hurt. Big E Hurt Sports Cards and Memorabilia. You also got a free entry into the December drawing, which will be tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last Saturday of the month for December. So we will have the drawing tomorrow. We'll see in the live stream tomorrow if we get some more entries or not and just as a side note there is ways that you can get additional entries into my december giveaway the wheel isn't quite as full as last year or last year last month but we do have a bunch of names in there for december so let me get back in the chat here all right um Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Now, I forgot how to move my chat back to the side of the stream. So now I can keep a name on it. Biggie Hurt, of your name, a spin off from Frank Thomas's nickname. Um, Yeah, I think it is there, Kevin. Big E Hurt. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get right into our content for today. Won't hem and haw around too much here. But the Santa Cam is watching everybody. I know Santa probably has already visited all the houses in the world. As far as I know, he's finishing up almost midnight gone on the Asian countries. But uh, so we will move into Luis Aparicio. I think that's how you say it, Luis Aparicio. And uh, Luis Ernesto Aparicio Montiel, born April 29, 1934, nicknamed Little Louie, is a Venezuelan former professional baseball player who is notable for being the first player from Venezuela to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He played as a shortstop in Major League Baseball from 1956 to 1973, most notably for the Chicago White Sox, with whom he became known for his exceptional defense and base-stealing skills. Aparicio won the American League Rookie of the Year Award in 1956, helped he helped the Go-Go White Sox win the American League Championship in 1959 and was the American League Most Valuable Player runner-up that season. He led the American League in stolen bases, putouts, assists, and fielding as shortstop. He was an all American League All-Star for 10 seasons, an American League Stolen Base Leader for 9 consecutive seasons, and an American League Gold Glove winner for 9 seasons. MLB legend Ted Williams called Aparicio the best shortstop he had ever seen. He was nominated for the Major League Baseball All-Century Team, the 100 Greatest Players, in 1999. 
pop in the chat. Ethan Zelvis covers and more is in the chat. Thanks, Ethan, for stopping by. Appreciate you being here, buddy. Uh, three o'clock. Okay, so you'll be you'll be on about uh it's the uh three six okay six o'clock uh pacific standard time okay we'll see if we still have our company over or not we do have company coming over this afternoon so thanks there ethan um i'll be in and out that's when our grandkids get here to see if santa came by our house understand kevin all right as far as his early life continue on as I got caught up with the chat here real quick. Uh, Aparicio was born in Maracaibo, uh, Zalulia State in Venezuela. His father, Luis Aparicio Sr., was a notable shortstop in Venezuela and owned a winter league team with the Aparicio's uncle, Ernesto Aparicio. At the age of 19, Aparicio uh, was selected as a member of the Venezuelan team, Amateur World Series in Caracas. He signed to play the local professional team in Maracabayo alongside his father in 1953 as in a symbolic gesture during the team's 1953 home opener his father led off as the first hitter of the game took the first pitch and had uh, Aparicio Jr. take his place at bat. Uh, as far as his major league career next all good just stopping by to say hi we're uh, giving away over 10 cards, opening two boxes, and ripping some care packages. There we go, Ethan. Thanks for sharing. We'll try to make it if I can. Aunt Donald, did you build a uh, 2019 Diamond Kings card set? The Easter Bunny wants to know. Um, I don't know. I'd have to check and see what somebody sent me to see if I have a complete set or not. So, um, but thanks for asking there, Bibby, for the East, the Easter Bunny. <laughs> That's cute. All right. So on to his major league career here. All right. So he started off, of course, with the Chicago White Sox from 1956 to 1962. The Cleveland Indians had been negotiating to sign Aparicio, but the Indians general manager Hank Greenberg expressed the opinion that he was too small to play in the major leagues. Chicago White Sox general manager Frank Lane, on the recommendation of fellow Venezuelan shortstop Chico Carrascal, then signed Aparicio for $5,000 down and $5,000 in his first year's salary. After only two years in the minor leagues, he made his major league debut at the age of 22, re replacing Carrascal as the White Sox shortstop in 1956. Aparicio would lead the American League in stolen bases, assists, and putouts, and won both the Rookie of the Year and Sporting News Rookie of the Year awards. He was the first Latin American player to win the Rookie of the Year award. Aparicio quickly became an integral member of the Go Go White Sox teams in the mid 50s, who were known for their speed and strong defense. Over the next decade, Aparicio set the standard for the spray-hitting, slick-fielding, speedy shortstop. He combined with second baseman Nellie Fox to become one of the best double-play combinations in Major League Baseball. Aparicio once again led the American League in stolen bases and assists in 1957 as the White Sox would hold first place until late June before finishing the season in second place behind the New York Yankees. In 1958, that was the year I was born, Aparicio earned recognition as one of the top shortstops in Major League Baseball when he was selected to be the starting shortstop for the American League in, 19, in the 1958 All-Star Game. Well, uh, the White Sox once again finished the season in second place behind the Yankees after being in first place on June 14th. Aparicio again led the leg in stolen uh, bases, assists, putouts, and would win his first Gold Glove Award. 
Aparicio was the team leader when the Go-Go White Sox won the American League pennant in 1959, finishing the regular season five games ahead of the Cleveland Indians. Aparicio finished the runner-up to teammate Nellie Fox in the American League Most Valuable Player Award balloting. He was selected as a starting all-star for the second time and also won a second Gold Glove Award. He posted a 308 batting average in the 1959 World Series as the White Sox defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers in a six-game series. When Aparicio stole 50 bases in his first 61 attempts in 1959, the team Ap Aparicio double was coined to represent a walk and a stolen base. Following the death of teammate Johnny Ramono, Aparicio became the last surviving player to play with the White Sox in the 1959 World Series. In 1960 and 61, Aparicio continued to be one of the top shortstops in the American League, finishing at or near the top in fielding percentage and assists. In 1962, he showed up overweight and had an off-year and the White Sox offered him a reduction in salary for the 1963 season. An enraged Aparicio said that he would quit rather than accept a decrease in pay and demanded to be traded. The White Sox eventually traded him to the Baltimore Orioles with Al Smith and Hoyt Wilhelm, Ron Hansen, Dave Nicholson, and Pete Ward in January of 1963. Pop back into the chat real quick. I've seen it flying up a few times. My son pulled three good football rookies this morning at a 2020 Panini Playoff Football. Fat facts this morning. That's cool. My favorite Venezuelan player, Fogo Power de la Pica, Eduardo Escobar. Congrats, Biggie. That's awesome for Christmas. Uh, da da da. Uh, Tua. the market now marked up prices of course clay pool is good uh, nelly fox i lived and is buried oh nelly fox has lived and is buried about five miles from where i live uh, i do pc nelly fox as well clay pool is a sharp looking card vivi says i like the 1958 nelly fox card I don't know if I've ever seen a 1958 Nelly Fox card. But one of these days, maybe I'll see one. All right, so let me continue on. Now on to the Baltimore Orioles from 1963 to 1967. Aparicio regained it a form in Baltimore and continued to lead the league in stolen bases and in fielding percentage, producing a career career-high 983 fielding percentage in 1963, together with Brooks Robinson and Jerry Adair. He was part of one of the better defensive infields in baseball. In 1964, he would lead the league in stolen bases for a ninth consecutive year and win his sixth Gold Glove Award. Aparicio posted a 276 batting average with 182 hits in 1966, tied with teammate Frank Robinson for the second most hits in the league behind Tony Oliva and won a seventh Gold Glove Award as the Orioles clinched their first American League pennant. He finished ninth in the American League Most Valuable Player Award balloting and helped the Orioles sweep the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 1966 World Series. Uh, let's see, Kevin said 1958. That's really old. Thanks, Kevin. I'm glad you know I'm really old. <laughs> Bibby Bobka's laughing out loud. Uh, I almost hated Nellie's 1952, had Nellie's 1952 Bowman rookie card. Still one of my coveted cards to get. That's cool there, Big Ear. It's always nice collecting some of the players you remember from back in the day. All right, so next we have, uh, of course, he went back to the Chicago White Sox um, for 
a couple of years in 1968 through 1970. With the emergence of Mark Bellinger at shortstop, Aparicio was traded back to the White Sox, along with Russ Snyder, John Mathias, and Don Buford. For Don Buford, Bruce, Bruce Howard, and Roger Nelson on November 29, 1967. He continued to play well defensively, leading the league in, in range factor in 1968 and 69. Aparicio had his best over off, overall offensive season in 1970, scoring 86 runs and finishing fourth in the American League batting race with a career-high average of 313. In addition, he earned his eighth All-Star berth that year as well as his ninth gold glove. Despite the White Sox finishing in last place, Aparicio finished 12th in the 1970 American League Most Valuable Player award balloting. Then he moved on and played his final years with the Boston Red Sox in 1971 to 1973. After these three seasons with the White Sox, Aparicio, or after three seasons with the White Sox, Aparicio was traded to the Boston Red Sox for Luis Alvarado and Mike Andrews on December 1st, 1970. In 1971, Aparicio was one at-bat from tying the longest major league hitless streak for non-pitchers held by Bill Bergman with 45, set in 1909, with Brooklyn Super Bass by going what, without a hit and 44 at-bats. Aparicio then hit a grand slam home run against the Indians in Cleveland and then let off a night game at Fenway with another home run. He hit only 232 for the year, the second lowest average in his career. In 1972, Aparicio made a late season base running blunder that contributed to the Red Sox losing the 1972 American League Division title by a half game to the Detroit Tigers. In an October 2nd game against the Detroit against Detroit, Aparicio fell while rounding third base on an apparent triple by Carl Yastrzemski, leading to Yaz, Yaz, Yastrzemski being tagged out as he tried to retreat to second base. In his last year as an active player in 1973, Aparicio would hit for a 271 average and steal his 500th base against the New York Yankees on July 5th. He retired at the end of the season at the age of 39. Danny and Gray's Toys, Merry Christmas everyone and thanks Donald for the Christmas card. Got it yesterday. That's really <laughs> kind of really neat in, the, in a way. A lot of people got my Christmas card on Christmas Eve. Trust me, it wasn't planning on my part, but I guess a, a bunch of people did. Um, I think Kevin got his yesterday also, so that was kind of neat. And a few other people have uh, texted and uh, emailed me to say thank you. You're welcome there, Danny and Gray's Toys. Hope you and the family are having a wonderful Christmas together. All right, as far as his career statistics, we just got a few more things to finish up here. Uh, Aparicio played for 18 Major League seasons in 2,599 games, accumulating 2,677 hits and 10,230 at-bats for a 262 career batting average along with 394 doubles, 83 home runs, 791 uh, runs batted in, and, and 1,335 runs and 506 stolen bases. That's right. Thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me if you can. See if we can get up to double digits before I end the stream today. It's always a challenge to try and do that, let alone 20 thumbs up. He ended his career with a 972 fielding percentage. Aparicio led American League shortstops eight times in fielding percentage, seven times in assists, and four times in range factor uh, and putouts. He led the American League in stolen bases in nine consecutive seasons, 1956 through 1964, and won the Gold Glove Award nine times from 58 to 62, 1964, 66, and 70. Aparicio was also a 10 time, 10 seasons All Star, 1958 to 64, and 70 72. And he was named 
to 13 of 14 All-Star games. The MLB held two All-Star games from 1959 through 1962 and was the starting shortstop in six All-Star games and played in 10 games. He didn't play in the second All-Star game in 1960 and was injured and replaced in the 1964 and 1972 games and didn't play. At the time of his retirement, Aparicio was the all-time leader for the most games played. Assists and double plays by a shortstop and the all-time leader for putouts and total chances by an American League shortstop. His nine Gold Glove Awards set an American League record for shortstops. That was tied by Omar Vizquel in 2001. He tied the record of most seasons ending the league in fielding average by shortstops with eight. Previously set by Everett Scott and Lou Bardell. All right. Um... Donald, you need to get back into working at the USPS. Get that place straightened out. Laugh out loud. I shipped some eBay packages around the 1st of December, and some have not made it yet. Oh, I know. I <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, maybe if they nominated me for Postmaster General, I could try and straighten things out. But I don't see that happening. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the concern. I had a worry about... Uh, and I'll talk about this SSP trout that Kevin gave me and I brought out uh, yesterday. Um, I was getting nervous about it, too, because he sent it. It, it, it was a two-day priority mail package, and it took almost 10 days to get to me. I got it uh, on the 23rd, and I think he mailed it on the 14th. <laughs> So that was interesting for sure. His 2,583 games. Uh, oh, I'd get your vote, baby. <laughs> I wish it was that simple. <laughs> um, his 2,583 games played at shortstop stood as the major league record for that position from his retirement until 1970, in 1973 until May of 2008, when it was surpassed by Omar Vizquel. His 2,677 hits was also a major league record for players from Venezuela until it was surpassed by Omar Vizquel on June 25, 2009. His 2,673 hits as a shortstop was a record until Derek Jeter broke it on August 17, 2009. He had 13 consecutive seasons with enough plate appearances to qualify for the batting title and on-base percentage. Less than 325, a major league record. His career OBP was slightly better than the shortstop average during the era, 311 versus 309. A more impressive streak was his 16 straight seasons with more than 500 plate appearances, tied for fifth best in major league history. Aparicio never played any defensive position other than shortstop. He was the American League leader in at-bats with 1,966, American League leader in singles with 1,966, the American League leader in sacrifice hits in 1956 and 60, American League leader in stolen bases in 1956 through 64, and an American League leader in putouts as shortstop in 1956, 58, 59, and 66. <laughs> And the American League leader in fielding average as shortstop in 1959 and 1966. Um, so other than that, that's pretty much Luis Arpiz Ar Aparicio's, oh, I don't know why, said, that's such a hard name to say, uh, biography. For this Hall of Fame Friday. But I'm going to go through real quick here. And I'll highlight some of his cards. That I got out of my PC. These are all my different cards. So what I do in my in my PC for Hall of Famers. Is I have two sections. When I have them in order. I know which ones I have. And which ones I don't. And then um, in the front of those. What I do is any extras I have. In case I want to give some cards out. To different people. As they have different requests. Or different 
types of things I want to do. So down the road, I'll be putting away, putting together like uh, sets, hopefully, of uh, as many Hall of Famers, like maybe 100 different Hall of Famers, 50 different Hall of Famers, maybe 150, maybe up to 200, depending on what I end up having when I get all my cards sorted. Um, so those are some of the things I'll do. But this is, I'll show you each of the different cards I have for Aparicio in my Hall of Fame collection here. So we've got a high praise here. This is a, a Cooperstown type card from, uh, uh, this is Panini 2012. And this is card number one in that set. All right. Then we have next, we have a, a Luis Aparicio with the Boston Red Sox when he was the shortstop there. I'll just kind of put these in order down here. Then we've got the Heroes of Baseball, Leaf, Luis Aparicio from 2015, Leaf. Then I've got this one here, an all-time classic, um, Luis Aparicio Sweet Spot Classics from Upper Deck for um, 2002. Then we have another Upper Deck Luis Aparicio. All right, from uh, 2005 Upper Deck product. This one here is from the Cooperstown set. This is a short print. Uh, they're falling all off. Um, but this is, of course, when he was inducted in 1984. This is one of the, the shiny Cooperstown variation cards from card number 74. And this was from a 2013 Cooperstown set that they made. Then we have here another uh, Chicago White Sox throwback type card, Top Stadium Club Chicago White Sox from, this looks like a 2015 top set, Top Stadium Club back in the day. There's a Cooperstown from 2000 and, uh, sometimes you got to look for the year up here 2012 card number 136 this is the one that Bibby just gave me recently I added that into my uh, set here since when I did get it from him I had uh, set it aside because I knew he was next for my Hall of Fame biography so hopefully that's nice crackle there you go <laughs> the, the the crackle one there all right, and then here we got uh, a then and now type comparison with Aparicio and Mike Trout from uh, Topps Heritage from 2012, I think, or 13, 2013, uh, Topps Heritage. And then this one here is the last one, a 1966 Topps Baseball Flashback. Louie Get Lucy. Louis Get Loose from Topps Heritage. This one is a 2015 Topps Heritage. Uh, this was a subset, I think. Yeah. BF 2. All right. And this one was a then and now TN AT. So there we go. There we have it. My Luis Aparicio Hall of Fame collection for them. Yeah. I, th I thought that was my nicest. Uh, type card from him, the, the little crackle one there. I actually got um, an autograph from Cooperstown and different ones. I did get a memorabilia, I think, from, from one of my Cooperstowns also. But boom. So there you go there with that. Okay. Now we'll move on to part two, and that's family mail call. Family mail call. And we're going to go through part 9 of 12 from Bibby Bobka's section here. So let me set these aside for the moment here. Um, I'm going to set those right there. I'll remember to put them back in my Hall of Fame separation here. But um, we'll do Bibby's and then we'll do our Fairfield Friday. Our Fairfield Friday fun. Okay. Doing pretty good here. I got a half an hour to get through the next part of my stream here. So I'll vote for you. <laughs> I want to see him as commissioner of baseball.
Nice crackle. I don't know about commissioner baseball. I, I think you have to be more into baseball. That would be a nice position to have, but I don't know if I'd want to move to New York City. Isn't that where the commissioner of baseball is based out of? New York City? I'd have to live in or move there. I don't know if I'd want to do that for sure. All right, there's 8A. We'll go through 8A, and then we'll go through 8B here. See what kind of goodness we can find out of this. And then let me put him... I know Trout's looking over that way. He's he's checking out Randy Johnson's ball and with Cal Ripken Jr. behind him here. I see you got some more 2019s here. I'm going to have to go through these and see if... Uh, See if I get enough of the, the top gallery. Is that what you were talking about a little while ago there, Bibby? Was the top's gallery? Let's see if I can find that one where you talked about the Easter Bunny. Where did Bibby talk about the Easter Bunny here? <laughs> Sorry, I'm scrolling back through the chat. I know Bibby put something in here earlier. Oh, did you build a 2019 Diamond Kings card set? I don't really have the Diamond King card sets much. I was thinking you were thinking Topps Gallery or something. I'm sorry, I read it wrong. But uh, the Diamond Kings 2019. I don't think I did. But... uh. This was the first year since getting back into collecting that I went all out with the 2020s. Um, but last year in 2019, I didn't do much. I was mainly opening a lot of junk wax and some boxes that I had and some different packs and different products, some older products. So that's why this year I kind of centered on the newer stuff. But let's see who we got here. Joey Votto with the Cincinnati Reds from 2009 Goodwin Champions. Uh, Paul Molitor. Is that Paul Molitor? Yep, Paul Molitor. Joe DiMaggio with a pinnacle here. That's a sweet looking card. I like that. Joe DiMaggio signing baseball. China signing a baseball. All right, then we got Phil Rizzuto. Uh, Robin Yelt. Here we go. We got a Manny Machado with the Orioles. Is that Manny? Yep, that's Manny. Adrian Beltre with the Seattle Mariners. That's when Adrian Beltre was with the Mariners for a few years. Uh, five, six, seven, and eight, at least on that one. Cal Ripken Jr., there we go. Cal Ripken Jr., sweetness. Oh, where's 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 Kevin? Oh, my word, look at that. We got a... It's a Fairfield Friday on a Fairfield Friday. Fox Bama, hey, what's up? Merry Christmas and Roll Tide Rolled. Merry Christmas, Chuck. Oh, Chuck here, Chuck's here too. Hurry up. Thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. Don't forget to put the thummies up in there. That's right, Fairfield Friday. Um, I'm noticing Bibby's uh, into these doubles. <laughs> here we got another one too, I think. Vladimir Guerrero, Vladdy Daddy here with the upper decks. Vladdy Daddy with the upper decks. Uh oh, nope. Actually, this one's a triple, Kevin. This is a triple Vladdy Daddy. <laughs> oh, boy. Bibby knows how to interject humor, that's for sure. Then we got a Don Chasing Donnie Baseball. Don Mattingly's in here. There's some more Don Mattingly sweetness. Another Don Mattingly. Uh, Roy Holiday, 2006 MLB All Star. Another Roy Holiday. Ooh, I like that one. Top Stadium Club, Pedro Martinez. Got to get some Pedros here. He's on a on a group here. But two Tonys are better than three Vladdies. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so Pedro Martinez again. Oh, there we go. Kevin. Ooh, it's a Tony Gwynn. It's the red variation one. The red variation, Tony Gwynn. Pedro Martinez, Wade Boggs, Ryan Sandberg, Community Heroes. Um, here we go with some, I think these are Topps Gallery ending up right here, 2019 Topps Gallery. I'll have to look through and see if I get a set of 2019. 
I don't think I have any other sets at 2019 because I did the one. But we are going to be highlighting a lot of the 2020 sets coming up in the new year. Okay. So coming up in the new year, we will be going through and highlighting sets. Okay. I think I'm going to skip. I'm going to do something just a little different next Wednesday and starting in 2021. I want to be a little bit different. We'll start previewing the 2020 complete sets that I have on, on hand. Okay, so I'll be setting up a schedule for those. But uh, Pedro Avila with the Padres, Kevin Newman with the Pirates, uh, Nicholas Castellanos with the Cubs, Cole Stewart, rookie card for the Twins, uh, Lane Thomas with the Cardinals, rookie card, Josh Hader, not quite. We, we we got nine people watching, but only seven thumbs up. Thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. Trying to get to that those double digits. Double digits. Let me do a refresh and see maybe if my my screen's not up to date real quick. Let me just do a refresh here just to see. Doesn't hurt. We got nine people watching. Six, seven thumbs up. It just bounces around a little bit here. <laughs> That's uh, one computer says six, one says seven. Oh no, they no, no they, they they say seven. One said seven, one said six. <laughs> Josh Hader with the Brewers, uh, Josh James with the Astros rookie card, Christian Stewart with the Tigers rookie card, uh, Dowell Lugo with the Tigers rookie card, Stephen Duggar with the Giants rookie card, Reese McGuire with the Blue Jays rookie card. And we got a uh, Wilson Contreras with the Cubs. Then we've got a Bryce By or, or Byron Buxton with the Twins. Uh, Will Smith with the Dodgers rookie card. Merrill Kelly with the D-backs rookie card. Sean Anderson with the Giants rookie card. Shane Adams with the Yankees rookie card. Elvis Luciano with the Blue Jays rookie card. Danny Jansen with the Blue Jays rookie card. And David Fletcher with the Angels rookie card. So nice little... Yeah, I'm going to check on building the set for this one for 2019. And if I have a chance to go through before next Wednesday, maybe that's what we'll do. Is if I have the Topps Gallery. We'll see. You can build a set. <laughs> All right, so let me go into package two for Bibby's part nine of 12. We have three more parts to go for this. We will do one tomorrow, and then next uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we should finish up Bibby's package just in time for January coming up around the corner. Okay, put that in the, in the bucket here. Let me go down on my my list here and check off number eight I'll go through here and check off number eight so I know 9 10 and 11 are left okay I got that checked off there let's see who we've got in this one oh, actually here I'm gonna move these over here for now till I move everything off to the side here all right, I think we got some more Tops Gallery on the bottom down here. But we'll see. Uh-oh. Got a note or something in this one. Oh, okay. He put some little some little notes in there, I think. <laughs> Maybe so I don't miss it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Bibby Bobka, uh, tw 20, 20 Diamondbacks equal one Vlad Vlad Vladdy. Oh, 20 Diamondbacks <laughs> equal one Vladdy. <laughs> Lou Brock, um, outfielder for the St. Louis. This is a, oh, okay. Uh, this is the Panina, P Panina, Panina, Panini, uh, America Trading Cards. Uh, Warren Spahn, Joe Morgan for Cincinnati, Sparky Anderson with Cincinnati. Lou Bordeaux with Cleveland, 
uh, Norm Cash with Detroit, Bob Gibson with St. Louis. Uh-oh, we got a, a Larry Walker. Oh, I got a Larry Walker rookie card. A Larry Walker rookie card. Thanks for putting that in there, baby. Let me take care of him right now and put him in at rookie. Penny sleeve here. Okay. That way we'll give him the honors due. That way I can put him in my Hall of Fame rookie card collection. But that's a Larry Walker rookie card. Thanks for the note. That helped me out because I would have just passed it right by. <laughs> Yep, this is his rookie stats, 1989, 1990 tops, I mean. His rookie card. Thank you there, Bibby, for the note. That helped out. <laughs> All right, uh, Eddie Matthews with the Braves, the Milwaukee Braves back in the day. Um, Bill Dickey with the New York Yankees. Um, looks like some Gypsy Queens coming up here, a few. Um, is that uh, Eddie Matthews uh, for the Braves, the Milwaukee Braves? Uh, Justin Verlander with the Detroit Tigers. Then we have, oh, there we go, ERA leaders, Roy Holiday, CC Sabathia, and Johan Santana. Donnie Baseball, Don Mattingly. All right, Roy Holiday with the Tops Ticket to Stardom. Tops Ticket to Stardom. 2009 Tops for the Roy Holiday. Boom, 1987. Cal Ripken Jr. for my PC. Uh-oh, we've got some duplicates here. Uh-oh, there you go, Kevin. Where's Kevin? Got a, a triple Tony Gwynn. Got a triple Tony Gwynn here. <laughs> triple Tony Gwynn. Then it looks like the next one here, we got a double. So we had back-to-back, -back, a triple and a double by Tony Gwynn. And then a Don Mattingly. <laughs> a triple Tony Gwynn, a double Tony Gwynn, and then a single... Don Mattingly. <laughs> Roy Holiday, uh, 2000 Tops, 2002 Tops, Pedro Martinez. Uh, score 95, Pedro Martinez. Uh, American League Division Series, Cleveland Indians with the Boston Red Sox. Okay. That's a thick card. Not flimsy at all. Uh, Tony Gwynn checklist card there, Kevin. Tony Gwynn checklist card. Pedro Martinez, Sports Illustrated, from, uh, let's see, what year is this one? 1999 Fleer, Sports Illustrated card. Boom, Adrian Beltre again for the Seattle Mariners. For the Seattle Mariners, there we go. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr., Mr. Blue Eyes. Yep. Bell ringer for my, a single, a double, and a triple. <laughs> All right. Now we got to find that home run card. <laughs> that would be a, a four-bagger would be a... We'll consider that a home run if there's four. And five would be a grand slam. Wade Boggs with the Red Sox. Uh, Ryan Sandberg. That one's kind of weird. Got something. It's probably, no, okay, it's just a penny sleeve. It's not on the card. It's just on the penny sleeve. Ryan Sandberg with the Cubs. And then I think we're going to finish off with some gallery cards here from 2019. Some more gallery cards. So we got a Trent Thornton. With the Blue Jays, rookie card. Domingo Santana with the Seattle Mariners. Leave that in here in case I got a set. Max Muncy with the Dodgers. Uh, Willens uh, Studio with the Twins. Lance McCullers with the Astros. George Springer with the Astros. 
Uh, Ray Ramon Laureano with the Athletics rookie card. Harold Ramirez with the Marlins rookie card. John Duplantier with the D-backs rookie card. Uh, Jalen Beeks with the Tampa Bay Rays rookie card. Carson Kelly with the Diamondbacks. Um, Taylor Ward with the Angels rookie card. David Ponce de Leon with the Cardinals rookie card. Mitch Keller with the Pittsburgh Pirates rookie card. Brad Keller with the Royals rookie card. Jeff McNeil with the Mets rookie card. Uh, Heath Phil Philmeyer with the Royals rookie card. And Nicky Lopez with the Royals rookie card. Awesome cards there. Bibby, appreciate that. Thanks for the Larry Walker rookie card. Set that off to the side here for now. Get these two Seattle Mariners into my Seattle Mariners holdout here. Put my Cal Ripken Juniors. Let, let's see. I'm going to put these right in the back here for now. Oops. So I'll leave them on screen. Move these guys back here for those two packs of cards. Put my two Seattle Mariners back here. I'll put my Cal Ripken Juniors right in front of Ethan for now. Okay. Then we'll leave a stand here in case we get some Hall of Famers or a hit in our Fairfield Friday box. So let me do a refresh really quick here, and we'll go through this Fairfield. And I don't know if Kevin, my adult supervision's here for opening this box correctly. But that's okay if he's not. I know he's going to be busy. He's probably not around by now. But we will go ahead and open up our Fairfield box here. All right. And I think, if I remember right, he does the bottom first because he said the hit usually is in the top part. From what I remember. And then we will do the pack in the middle of the box. So let me get that set aside here so we can put the pack off there. And we'll open up the bottom like Kevin does in his channel all the time. In case anybody's wondering, I, I don't save my fear fail boxes. I could probably ship them all that left, be left behind. And if he ever asked, I probably would do that because I keep mine in pretty good shape. But I just throw them in my recycle bin. So we got a Robin Ventura right on the top. I don't know why he's curling. There must have be a... But this one is the same probably as the other ones for this batch. Yep, 7 of 20. 7 of 20 is the year and the month for these cards. So I'm going to um, put the top half on the bottom. I'll put these here. No, I'll put these here because that'll be last. We got the 80, I think this is the 89 flare. Or the 89 Don Russ. I think this is the 89 Don Russ. So we'll have to see. Wow. Maybe we'll get a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. <laughs> I doubt it. But uh, most, most of the cards in here are usually commons from what I've seen. So but we'll see what we can find in here. Okay, that's what he does. That's what I thought. Bivy would know. He pays attention to these things. Let me get a sip of water before we get going and finish up the stream here. And we'll see if we can get a famous Fairfield double in here. Sometimes they're not, <clears throat> not together, but sometimes they are. So Ryan Klesko with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Brett Bo uh, Backland. All right. With the uh, Pirates top prospect card. So that's a prospect. Not a rookie, but a prospect card. I'll put that in with my rookie separation. Billy Hatcher with the Red Sox. Randy Knorr with the Blue Jays. There we go. Uh, Gene Lamont and Don Baylor. <clears throat> All right. Then we got Moose Haas. Ed Whitson. 
91, Don Russ with the Padres. Tim Nearing, shortstop. Uh, Mario Soto with the Reds. Mark Acorn. Ike Icorn with the Blue Jays. Keith Hernandez with the Indians. Eric Davis with the Reds. Javi Lopez with the Braves. Tom Froworth with the Phillies. Got a backwards card here. But it's just Brett Boone with the Seattle Mariners. Put him back here with the Mariners cards here. Oral Hirschheiser. Uh, 88, Don Russ. Wayne Tollison, 87, Don Russ. Greg Gagne with the Royals. Some more backwards cards. Nothing to write home to mom about, though. Robin Ventura with the New York Mets, third baseman. 2000 Omega. Uh, let's see here. Turn them over. No, I don't think anybody's flying today. It's a little cloudy, overcast, but usually Christmas it's pretty quiet in our local municipal airport here. Uh, Phil Hyatt with the Royals. Dante Bouchette, Bo Bichette's dad with the Rockies. Joaquin Andoar with the Athletics. Juan Encarnacion with the Detroit Tigers. 2000 Paramount Pacific. Dwayne Ward. Andy Van Slyke, Chad Hutchinson, um, Pete Smith with the Braves, Topps Finest, Adam Kennedy with the Angels, uh, Kirk McCaskill with the Angels. Um, got some backwards cards again. We got uh, the Upper Deck Ios collection, and that is Andy Van Slyke, insert card, uh, Johnny Damon with the Royals, um, Omar Oliveras with the Cardinals, uh, Mark Gren, 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 <laughs> my word, Gruzlinek. Those are neat looking cards. Whenever I've seen them before. Metal Universe. Alejandro Pena with the Dodgers. Uh, Tim Wakefield with the Red Sox. Bobby Mecham, Meacham with the Yankees. Jeff Johnson with the Yankees. Oh, we got an older card here. Frank Leha with uh, this is uh, the the 1954 Ultimate Series. I think these came out in 1994, if I'm right. I think it was like a 40-year a throwback series they did. Cool card. Alan Mills with the Yankees. And last part in the top half, Jose Valentin with the Mets. John Fishman is in the house. Ethan Zelvis covers and more. Oh, Ethan, you still hanging out? First white Christmas for us in 10 years. It's beautiful. Yeah, we had snow the first, first day of winter here on Monday. The first day of winter, we had some snow. Still a little bit of snow, but I can see plenty of snow in the mountains for us here. We kind of like, oh, not, not yet, Blomdahl. You're jumping the bun. Let's go ahead and open this. But that's that's neat there, Ethan, that you have a white Christmas. Uh, we got like five inches of snow. How about you, Bibby? Did you end up getting any snow? Uh, just very cold here, 18 degrees tonight. Oh, my word. So let's see what we can find in the 89 Don Russ here. Let's see if we can find a, a, a Randy Johnson or a Ken Griffey Jr. There's our puzzle piece for uh, Warren Spahn put that right there for now let's just go through these real quick and see we might get a hall of famer or two out of here you never know ron oster with the reds greg harris with the philadelphia phillies ken caminetti with the astros ken hill with the cardinals uh, jack mcdowell with the white Sox. 
That'd be a nice Christmas present, getting the griff here. Or uh, Randy Johnson. Uh, Brian Harvey with the Angels. Uh, Ray Hayward. I hope when Topps does 80s, uh, they have a spectacular spectacle set too. And feature Chris Sable. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Chris Sable's in the in the fabulous seventies. That would be neat if they did a, a an eighties. But on the fabulous seventies, I've got two more boxes of that up, and they do have uh, spectacular spectacles in in that one. I don't know if they have a Chris Sable. <laughs> but Ray Hayward with the Rangers. Oh, there we go. We got a Tom Gordon rated rookie for the Kansas City Royals. So one rated rookie in the pack here, Johnny Paredes with the Expos, Todd Burns with the Athletics, Jose De Jesus with the Royals, uh, Tim O'Leary with the Dodgers, uh, Hensley Mullins with the Yankees, Wes Gardner with the Boston Red Sox, and Eric King. So not even a Hall of Famer in there, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and uh, straighten this up a little bit here. And let's get into our last group here. Looks like we got a Gold Cup card here for Robin Ventura with the White Sox. So a Gold Cup card here. I still don't know why they're a little curly. There must be a curly card in here somewhere. Dan Schatzer with the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Rob Woodward with the Boston Red Sox, 87 Don Russ. Len Dykstra with the Phillies. Boom, there's our, I think, our oldest card so far. The uh, John Candelaria. Check out that hairdo. <laughs> I think they have a hairdo, not uh, a wild hair. That This guy could make it into the, into the 70s one if they did a throwback. <laughs> with the Pirates, 84. Oh, there we go, another one. Uh, Larry Parrish first with the Rangers. There we go. Marty Castillo, 84 Don Russ. Oh, I thought maybe he was going to get our, our duplicate. Uh, Mike Moore with the Athletics. Mike Flanagan with the Blue Jays. Dave Stapleton with the Red Sox, 84. We got a Joe Necro here. Joe Necro, but not Phil. Phil, or his brother's the Hall of Famer. He didn't make it into the Hall of Fame. Andy Hawkins, 91 upper deck. Rick Roden with the Yankees. Jesse Orozco, 91 upper deck. Will Clark, Will the Thrill Clark. Okay, there's Joe Necro again, but where's his brother Phil? He's the Hall of Famer. Ken Phelps with the Yankees. Mark Salas with the Yankees. Tom Brookins with the Yankees. Andy Hawkins with the Yankees. Getting a lot of Yankees cards here. Oh, is Will the Thrill Clark? Is, is that a rookie card? I didn't know if that was Will the Thrill Clark's rookie card. Ah, oh, this is. Oh, this is his rookie card, isn't it? Thank you there, Bibby, for... Shouting that out to me. I'll put him in my rookie holdout. Of course, Will the Thrill didn't make it into the Hall of Fame. He wasn't that thrilling, but thanks for that there, Bibby. I will put Will the Thrill Clark as a, we'll consider that one of our hits in the box here. That's why Bibby gets paid the big bucks. He was no thrill. <laughs> it's just his rookie card. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll have him penny sleeved up and just put him in with my rookie card separation. How's that sound? He'll he'll probably never make it into the Hall of Fame. But John John Buck talks Chrome rookie card for the Astros. That's pretty cool there. Rook that's that must be the the curliness factor there because now the cards are all flat again 
So it must have been because of the top chrome core, but it curls that way. It didn't curl this way. Um, oh, sorry about that. Then we got Bill Madlock with the Dodgers. Uh-oh, I made it just over my hour. I told my daughter I'd try and be under an hour. There we go. Bibby says not top loader material. <laughs> That's why I took him back out. Dale Mahorek with the uh, Yankees. Uh, Claudel Washington with the Yankees. A lot of Yankees in here. Jim Aker with the Braves. He's got some chew in his mouth, it looks like. Jerry Mumphrey with the Cubs. Jeff Parant with the Braves. Hensley Mullins with the Yankees. Todd Burns with the Athletics. Rob Deere. Rob Deere with the Brewers. Got a backwards card here. Uh, Carlos Carrasco, league leaders. For the uh, Cleveland Indians. Then we've got the Miguel Batista, pitcher for the D-backs. Got another backwards card here. Big legs. Sonny Gray with the New York Yankees. Derek Lee with the Florida Marlins. Uh, Roughned Odor with the Texas Rangers. And then we've got Orlando Hudson and Josh Phelps, future stars. Put that over there, future stars. Might not have made it big, but David Cohn with the Red Sox. 20th anniversary platinum card. Uh, 2001. Clear. All right, and then Steve Trichel with the Mets. And then we've got Ramon Vasquez with with the uh, San Diego Padres. And we finish it off with Boom and Edgar Martinez. Edgar Martinez, MLB Hot Prospects. Well, I know that's not a, that is a, uh, he is a Hall of Famer. I think the only Hall of Famer we got out of here, right? That the I think that's the only Hall of Famer we got out of the Fairfield box. I don't think I missed any others, did I? Did I miss any Hall of Famers there? John, what do you call a deer with three legs and no eyes? Still... No idea. <laughs> uh, did you get Cynthia any cards for Christmas? No, I didn't get Cynthia any cards for Christmas. I don't even any. I don't even think anybody bought me any cards for Christmas. But I don't know. We do Christmas in the afternoon when our when our family gets here. So that's pretty much where we are there. Well, the only card I got of note there was that one. And we did get the Larry Walker rookie card that Bibby gave me in his his package there. That's right. I doubt Cynthia wants to get you more cards. True. True. <laughs> then we got the puzzle piece. Put that with Cal Ripken Jr. there. Got a few rookies, few prospects out of the Fairfield. But not too busy a happy Fairfield at all. So I think that's about all I've got for today. Appreciate you all being here today. Thank you for stopping by and paying a visit on this Christmas morning. Well, Christmas morning for me, I know. What is it, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast? But other than that, let me go ahead and uh, get ready to sign off here. There, cut that glare off of the light there. What is your estimate when you get your Dave Winfield giveaway. My Dave Winfield giveaway? I don't know about a Dave Winfield giveaway. Did I miss something in the chat? <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas all. Uh, from Jabs. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Probably next year. That's probably when I'll get my Dave Winfield from, from Eric Jabs. It'll probably be next year. 
And like you said, it'll probably be in a plain white envelope. I wonder if I'll e it'll even show up. <laughs> Bibby says, never. Laugh out loud. Uh, that would not surprise me. That would not surprise me anymore. Because I know uh, Eric keeps pretty busy. Uh, I'm, I, I visit his channel kind of less and less. Sometimes I make an appearance just to say a hello, and he says, oh, check out Donald Blumdahl's channel. But I don't, I don't think I get much traffic from him. I probably get more from Ethan's channel to my channel than, uh, than from Eric. But you know, that's okay. Ethan, would you ever send a, a giveaway in a plain white envelope? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I'll ever get that from... If, if, if it finally does show up, I'll know where it came from. <laughs> I'll know where it came from for sure. Because it'll go into my, my Hall of Fame separation for David Winfield. But that's no big deal. Not a big one. <laughs> so other than that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Uh, let me turn my camera around so you guys can see Santa Claus one last time. This will be my last last day wearing my Santa gear. My Santa gear. So uh, there's the hat. Good to go here. You all have a great and wonderful Christmas out there. Ethan, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you being here in the background. Um, Donald, will you be on? Uh, I will be on your stream later. Donald, will you be on? Have a good one, guys. See you soon. Um, I, I'll i probably be streaming something a little bit later today. Uh, getting some more uh, Christmas Village action. Probably my uh, my Christmas tree. Uh, might do a little bit this evening with the Christmas lights on the outside of the house. Take you outside so you can see how I have my the lights on, my Christmas, uh, on our house outside. It's not super spectacular. Um, me and the wife... This weekend coming up, we might go out for a drive just to see the Christmas lights. We, I kept saying we were going to do that. We never did. So we'll see if we can do that one of these nights. If I do a Christmas, uh, Christmas light neighborhoods run, I might record some of that, throw some content up. But other than that, you all have a great, happy, Merry Christmas with your families, friends, and loved ones. Uh, I thank you for sharing your Christmas day with me. Those that were in the chat here, we got eight thumbs up. Better than I expected. I thought maybe four or five people might show up. But you all take care. Have a nice Christmas. And we will see you all around the channels. I'll try and get into Ethan's stream. I think Kevin's got a recorded content going to pop up on the, probably a little bit later today for his Fairfield Friday. He's not doing a live one because he's got some grandkids to have some fun with at Christmas time. But um, other than that, um, I will try and poke into some streams today if some people go live. So other than that, I'm going to turn the camera around and I will probably sign off right about at the 70 minute mark here. So if you do want to wish me a Merry Christmas or anything like that, feel free to do so. So I will turn the camera around like I got it right now. Sorry, I'm Try to get it centered on my break table here. But you all have a great and wonderful day. And uh, we will see you all uh, tomorrow for my next scheduled live stream. That'll be episode number six for Searching for the Gems. Searching for the Gems. Okay, sorting my the last section in box number two. And then I'll have uh, another box. And then I do have some 5,000 count boxes I got to sort and go through at the same time also. So we will be searching for gems for the next month at least, or two, or three. We'll see how many boxes we get through. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great and wonderful Christmas. Um, and I'll leave you on one little party note. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jingle bells, swinging jingle bells, snowing, blowing up bushels of fun. Now jingle, 
The jingle hop begins. I didn't want to do that one. <laughs> but that's my closest rendition of a Christmas song. So, uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun we have in say. And I'm a terrible singer today. Take care. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye now. Definitely not like Ethan. Ethan's an awesome singer. By the way, we watched your latest Christmas song me and my wife did before she went to work this morning, Ethan. Bye. Take care now.